Welcome back for another video. Starting on a slightly serious note for a sec, the OG song that I've used in every video for years is officially dead. A copyright troll's been seemingly claiming it every video, so all my videos recently have been getting flagged, even though the song's royalty free. It's a bit of a broken process as you have to dispute it every time and hope to win. So what I've had to do is I've remixed it, and this is going to be the new video backing track now. I know at least some of you have said the backing track's iconic, so I thought I probably had to clarify on that. Anyway, let's get into it. So we're back with the team selection video ahead of Gaming 5, along with transfer plans and general thoughts this week. Starting with a quick look back at how last game week went. It was a very swingy game week, depending on if you had Haaland. Fortunately, in my case, I did have him, and he was my captain for 57 points overall, which was a green arrow. I actually would have been a couple of points better off if I'd made no transfers, because Bruno left the team for Salah, and he did get an assist, and Isaac left the team for João Pedro. I'll be honest, though, I'll take the fact that it wasn't punished more, given that Salah blanked, and João Pedro wasn't even in the squad, but Isaac went off for half-time, which was a bit lucky as a seller. Henderson disappointed once again, as did Conser and Trent, also getting one point each. But Dunk came through with a clean sheet to help get that green arrow over the line. An assist from Smith and Saka as well for seven pointers each, and completely carried by Captain Harlan getting a brace. Let's have a look at some of the highs and lows from last game week then, sent in by you. Unsurprisingly, this week there were a lot of disaster classes. FPL Miko didn't do too badly though, 55 points, but he benched Sanchez and Smith Rowe for 24 points on his bench. A couple of brutal transfers from Jared and FPL Nickel. Nkunku and Saka out for Salah and Winks for a hit resulted in a minus 14 point swing, and similarly Jared sold Gabriel and Saka for Duncan Salah, which was also minus 14 points. Francisco Wildcard at 22 points. I can't believe how unlucky this one was, as it's a decent team, but he didn't get a single return. Jamal shared his brother's team. He didn't wildcard, but he scored 21 points. Let's finish on a good one. FPL Legend shared his dad's team. He scored a crazy 93 points, and he's up to 3k overall. He had Jao Pedro like many of us, but Vissa's goal also subbed on for him. He got returns from Anana, Dunk, Saliba, Gabriel, Smith, Rose, Saka, and Haaland. Thanks very much for sending in, and if you had a bad game week, hopefully you can take some comfort knowing you weren't alone last week. The lowest score in the top 10k was 17 points. Let's get into the team for Gaming 5 then. In goal, it's of course Henderson. I've run out of things to say about this guy. Next season, I think I'm just going to pay the extra money for a premium keeper, as the 4.5 mils are too unpredictable. Last season, it was Pickford for me, who to be fair, did go on to have a good season, but he started horrendously, and this season it's Henderson. Still waiting for the first keeper clean sheet of the season, actually. In defence, it's Trent, Dunk and Pedro Porro. Three home fixtures, and Porro comes back into the start at 11, playing home to Brentford this week, who are going to be without Vissa for a couple of months, following the injury he picked up last game week. Going on a bit of a tangent here, but Shader could be an interesting pick, who played up top for Brentford in the League Cup on Tuesday. He's 5.4 mil. Bumo got a rest in that one, and he came on for the final 15 or so minutes. Long term, Tottenham's fixtures aren't too bad, and I do feel at some point Porro's going to pop up with a clean sheet and one attacking return sort of game for a big haul. After Brentford, it's Man United, Brighton, West Ham and Crystal Palace. Let's be honest though, Spurs aren't a great defence, and there is some reliance for him to produce a return here and there, to keep pace with the better defences that have less goal threat. Can Brighton make it consecutive clean sheets? They're third on the clean sheet probabilities this week, given a 36% chance, only behind Liverpool and City. They've only conceded twice this season in four games, and he has got the potential to be a season keeper if you can work your way around the tougher fixtures. Herzl is a really astute manager defensively, and I can see him finishing as one of the best 4.5 mil performers. So Liverpool have played in the Champions League, and this was how they lined up. So Robertson and Diaz got a rest, Trent, Salah and Jota all started. Trent came off at 79 minutes though, which was good. Slot came out with an interesting quote on Gakpo and Diaz after the game. He said, I would have planned to play Gakpo on Saturday against Forest, but Cody played two games for the Dutch national team, and Diaz was more fit. So we might see some rotations soon, but if you've got your Liverpool attackers, you might as well give them the Bournemouth game at home. Trent got an assist in that Champions League match against Milan as well. In midfield, it's Smith Rowe, Rodgers, Saka, Eze and Salah. I've got a difficult call to make with Smith Rowe, as I've got Konza on the bench, who is home to Wolves, and it also wouldn't surprise me if Konza gets a start either, who I've still got, so I've got to choose between one of those to start. I'll be keeping an eye for early team news on the deadline stream. At the moment, I just about prefer Smith Rowe to Konza, but a Kwanzaa start would be tempted to start him and go double Liverpool defence if he plays. Kanate's played every minute since coming on at half time in game week one. The next week they do have the League Cup, not the Champions League, so that could be the game to rest Kanate. When it's close between two players, I generally favour the attacker, hence Smith Rowe gets the nod. And also given it is a home fixture, and Newcastle haven't been great defensively so far, 
One goal, one assist in four games is very respectable for 5.5 mil, or 5.7 mil now. I wouldn't be looking to buy now though if you've not got him. Semenyo from next week looks like the one, given he's got Southampton home and then Leicester away. Salah gets the armband this week. I'm not put off by the blank last game, Mick, and Bournemouth are going to give up opportunities. And let's just hope it's not a repeat of that 9-0 win when they played them before and Salah somehow wasn't involved in all nine goals. No returns for Salah in the AC Milan game, but he did hit the post twice and he's still looking sharp. Rodgers started midweek as Villa beat Young Boys 3-0 in the Champions League and he came off for 88 minutes for Buendia. Again, I've got to favour Rodgers over Conser, because although he's yet to return this season, when you watch Villa, he's so involved in their attack. And if not for teammates poor finish and letting him down, he'd be on a couple of returns already. So I'm not too fussed by the lack of returns, as he's not eating up much budget either. With the power of hindsight, Ahmed would have been the bet at 5 mil mid, as far as points scored anyway, but his minutes have been a bit all over the place. And Garnacho was incredible in the League Cup, 2 goals, 2 assists, so he has to start this weekend. Maybe it'll be for Rashford though. Keeping faith in Saka paid off last game week, but this is going to be one of the toughest games of the season, away at City, and no Erdegaard. He came off injured at the end of the North London derby, but there's rumours he's fine and he might even be in the Champions League squad for midweek, though I'd hope to see him named on the bench if anything, which is very rarely Arteta's style. Keeping Saka has given me that option to potentially save the work on Gameweek 6 as well, though I might still go for it, depending on how Gameweek 5 plays out. In typical FPL style, Eze was quality in the League Cup, with a man in the match performance, one goal, one assist against QPR. He played the full 90 as well. I'm hoping for a goal fest against United here. After four game weeks, Haaland and Semenya have taken the most shots of 20 each, and then it's Eze of 18, 2.17 expected goal above him, which is good. Up front is Haaland and João Pedro. Now, it seems crazy not to captain Haaland after nine goals in four games, and I'm sure he's going to be the most popular captain again overall, by probably a landslide. So it's not about a lot of risk, but you have to take risks in FPL sometimes to break upwards. I mentioned in Monday's video how ridiculous Arsenal's away record is this calendar year. 11 games played, 10 wins, 1 draw, 31 scored, just 3 conceded, 9 clean sheets in those 11, and 0 minutes spent trailing the game. Arsenal didn't concede home or away against them last season either. Liverpool have got a point to prove as well in the league after that loss to Forest last game week, so for me it's Salah, the better overall captain, and Harlem Vice. João Pedro is currently flagged after missing last game week. Herzl was asked if he was going to be fit on Tuesday, and he said, we have to see training today to see if he's fully fit. Like I said after Ipswich, we don't want to take any risks with him. We'll decide if it makes sense to play him in the cup or not. So at the time of recording, they still got their League Cup game to play, and hopefully, if anything, he gets a cameo off the bench before a start on the weekend. On the bench is Valdemarsen, Konza, Kwanza and Canham. So a couple of question marks in the team, João Pedro and Saka mainly. I expect he'll be fine, but if Saka is out, then I could take a one-week punt on Sun and then wildcard in Gameweek 6 to get him back in. If João Pedro's out, I'm not sure I'd sell him to be honest, as I'd have that choice between playing Konza or buying someone like Calvert-Lewin for one week. Also, Calvert-Lewin wasn't in the League Cup squad midweek with a reported illness as Everton lost to Southampton, so that's something to watch out for as well. I can't help but feel starting Konza and taking two free transfers into Gameweek 6 would be better for longer term gains in that scenario. And of course, if I did go into wildcard, then I'd carry those two free transfers over to the other side and look to roll even more after that. So the current plan, if everything considered, is to roll the transfer and reassess in Gameweek 6. In Gameweek 6, with two free transfers, I could sell Salah and Cannon for Bumo and Havertz, but I'm going to be fully scouting Brentford out first and how they look about Vista this weekend. I think overall the team's in pretty good shape, but there is a lot I would change next week if it was possible to do for free. I'd have triple Arsenal, Semenyo, Bumo, Raya and Gold probably, maybe Foden as well. Hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you soon for the next one.